agenda is consent items with minutes of the July 17th regular board meeting and minutes of the August 2nd study session. If there are no objections, would you like to peruse those or approve those together? Are there any objections about that? Are there any additions, subtractions, deletions, or comments to either of those? <coughs> on the August 2nd one on the special meeting, mm -hmm. um, don't, do we usually put the personnel report in it, like we list them out? No? We don't have The content's accessible. Yeah, yeah it's public. Out, so yeah, it's it's public. available to the public through the okay. work website. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions, comments, additions, or deletions? Is there a motion to approve uh, consent items one and two from the minutes of July 17th and August 2nd, 2017? Oh, I'm sorry, there's another one. Also, minutes of the August 2nd, 2017 special meeting. Is there any comments, deletions, additions, subtractions, critiques on that one? I move that we approve all three meetings. Minutes. Motion made by Steve to approve the minutes of all three meetings. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the minutes from all three meetings, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. On to the financial report. So this evening we have approval of claims stock at 11,743, and then 11,745 through 11,931, and then also 20,047, totaling $1,806,680.37. We also have Three payrolls, I'm sorry, four payrolls to um, approve as well tonight. Um, and then also the funds report. Did you need to approve anything before going to the funds report? I think we'd all like you to go through them just like you have. Yeah. And then uh, we'll look at the budget separate, I would assume. But that's something the board can object to or not object to. Yeah. So with the general fund, we started with $783,626.12. We had $1,024,476.51 worth of receipts. Our expenses for the month were $892,308.85, leaving us an ending balance of $915,793.78. We're getting ready to come up into a payroll month of September, um, so that's a really good cash balance to have going into that. And as you can see here, we were doing really well as well. <coughs> fund, we started with $2,285,658.53. We had $9,522.80 worth of receipts. Um, and no expenses for the month, leaving us an ending balance of $2,295,181.33. Um, with Capital Projects Fund, we started with $791,613.67. We had $44,972.28 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $75,324.24, leaving us an ending balance of $761,261.71. Uh, before you go on that, for the iPad sales, I, I was confused by that. Sure. So the total sales were more than $86,000. So what is the 46% of devices out of? Well, the remaining devices, we when we um, had purchased the devices, we used a multitude of different funds. And so I um, looked at the percentage of how many different funds that we used for that last um, device sales, and then I determined out from there how much capital projects respective percentage paid for, and then applied pretty much reimbursed capital projects for that percentage. I obviously wasn't able to do 100%, um, but did a proportionate percent from there. So another, for an example, another fund that we had used to buy iPad sales would have been um, some of the IV Tech uh, dollars that we get in. Um, and when I say IV Tech dollars, the rental, the rental charge yep, that we charge for IV Tech has its own separate fund. Some of those funds were used for the iPad um, when we purchased the devices as well. So then you reimburse, reimburse that fund that proportionally. That proportionally. Okay, thank you. So, so there were several smaller funds. So, so was CPF the biggest one? It was. Then? Okay. It was. Thank you. I was looking for it in general. That's why I was confused. So, okay. Yep. Thank yep. you. Absolutely. Any other questions on CPF? I know it was kind of confusing, but I'd be more than happy to answer questions if anybody has any. Okay. Moving on to transportation fund. So we started with $1,223,541.53. 
We had $2,240 cents worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $37,397.47, leaving us an end balance of $1,188,384.72. Last but not least is bus replacement. We started with $360,261.18, had receipts of $610.62, no expenses yet, leaving us an ending balance of $360,871.80. Any questions on the final report? And to recap as well, um, <coughs> Anyone who worked during the sale of the iPads, um, we reimbursed general fund for those for the work as well too. So that's where we get that revenue from. Um, any other questions? I had a question on the claims. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that we had cell phone charges at both at AT and T and at the Educational Services Co-op. Is this as we're changing? It is a okay. transition. That's correct. And we'll have the same when it comes to Verizon as well. Because, um, we've established our own Verizon account, and um, starting in September into October, we'll have um, claims dockets with, made out to Verizon as we transition away from Northern Indiana Education. Any more questions about? My, I, I'm going to offer this, and if, unless there's any objections, if we talk about a motion for the first three articles, then we can have the presentation of the 2018 budget. Are there any issues or objections from any of the board members on that? Is there a motion to approve the first three uh, approval claims, payrolls, and fund report? So moved. Moved by Jenny. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving one through three of the financial report, approval of claims, payrolls, and fund report, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. On to the presentation of 2018 budget. In your binders is the PowerPoint presentation, and um, I did not get that linked up to our website, but probably after our meeting this afternoon, I will definitely get that PowerPoint presentation. Can everybody in the audience that wants to see this see it? I happy to move. Do I make a better door than I do? Oh, it's not open. Okay. 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 They're not going to cause any issues with timing. There's somebody who wants mine. I've seen them several times. <laughs> nice Same. Look Same. At them all, right? Here you go. Because yeah, I've looked at it. I've looked at it before. If anybody else in the audience would like one, you're certainly welcome to have mine. I've looked at it more times than I can imagine right now. You're a great spreadsheet person, Val, but boy. It is, it is a lot of information. Um, like oh, I, it has to be done. It, exactly. Um, and if anyone has any questions over this, um, we do it once a year. Um, it's something that we and um, there was a lot of details and there's a lot of information that's presented. So um, I encourage not just anyone here, but also the public that um, as you get looking at information online, if you have questions, give me a call, that's what I'm here for, uh, is that we're all on the same page and everyone's understanding uh, what we're moving forward. And I want to reiterate that as well. If the public does have any questions, you put a lot of time and effort to explain these things with all the different funds and how they relate to one another. If the public does have a question about it, please contact the central office so that way she can explain it. So to start off, we're going to review um, changes that went, in, went into place last year. Um, through uh, Senate and World Bank 321, um, we um, actually get the benefit of having information provided to us by the DLG up in Old Blunt. Um, more timely or fashion, and that's with the police and help of um, the cities and towns to get uh, the DLG up that information so that um, all of the respective <coughs> entities and units can build a more um, proactive budget. So um, and that just kind of goes through those recaps. Um, I've already gotten the maximum levies for some of the funds um, already for 2018 of what they're anticipating our caps to be because this is a new, pro um, a new aspect and a change of the way 
the DLGF is operating. I'm going to give them a couple of years before um, I <coughs> take a lot of those numbers to bear it into heart um, because there are a lot of moving pieces behind the scenes. Some entities might um, have a project that might not come to fruition, which is going to affect our funding. Um, here. Um, on the next page, it talks about the 2018 budget updates, and this is a really great and helpful diagram that um, I borrowed from uh, Umba and Associates. So what House Bill, um, House Bill 1009 does, it breaks up the five different funds that we have. We have general fund, obviously, um, debt service, capital projects, our transportation fund, and our bus replacement, and it, and it takes those five silos into three. So um, the general fund is going into is now going to be called education fund, and this is starting in January of 2019. So this is the last budget that will build like this um, with these five funds. Next year it'll be the three funds. So general fund because some of the things that we pay for from general fund they actually are um, custodial operations or they're um, things that aren't necessarily related to education. Um, there are, there's more language um, that I'm finding that um, as, as things are developed of how we can move forward and operate, um, I'm, I'm learning that there's some resolutions that if the board wants, um, so chooses, um, can allocate a special, you know, a certain percentage of funds, um, say for instance, um, we, if we pay 30% of our, of general fund is towards custodial and non-educational operations, um, then we can um, continually transition to pay those out of the operation fund and move those monies from the educational to the operations fund and still um, not operate in deficit financing and still have enough money to move down the road um, and pay for those things as well. So it was kind of a little bit of a loophole. The goal was to make it more cut and dry, but um, when it comes to the funds, but there are things that we pay for out of, the, out of our general fund that aren't educationally Related. And then, so then, um, so our education fund is, will be the one of the one of the new funds, and then the other new fund will be operations, and that will combine bus replacement, transportation, and our CPF, and then again some of the general fund. Sorry, but funds. CPF capital projects fund acronyms can throw some people off. Everybody, no, that's okay. I just want to make sure people yeah, realize what we're talking about. Capital projects fund. So those three: bus replacement, transportation, capital projects, and some of the general of the board so chooses will be the new operations fund. Um, and then we'll still have our debt services status quo as we always have. So lots of lots of big changes coming down the pike. Um, I just encourage anyone involved with school finance, you know, just to stay alert so these changes aren't so much of a shock and awe as we continue discussions um, about this transition and what it's and how it's going to affect um, our district. Um, so the 2018 budget calendar, 2000, uh, August 22nd um, is when I'm looking to have our notice of public hearing to appear in Gateway, um, upon the board's approval to advertise and move forward. Uh, bus replacement in the CPF uh, will also be provided to the Rat Rochester Sentinel and the weekly shopper for uh, DLGF regulations when you have to advertise in two places um, for those requirements. But, the, um, but our budget will be on the Gateway website. We'll have a link from our website to the Gateway website for those um, taxpayers looking to um, view those details. September 18th is our next board meeting um, in um, upcoming to have our public hearing. And then October 23rd, we're looking to have our budget adoption. Um, and then our approved CPF plan um, will be provided for um, of the public notice as well. All in all, November 1st is the, is the deadline to advertise all our budget and gateways, and that is um, not a good thing if you don't um, have your budget um, approved by the board um, no later than November 1st. So, any questions on those dates or timelines or anything? Next page is a historical review of funds um, and of your balances. So now that we've wrapped up 2016, um, I've entered those figures in the presentation as well. Um, overall, it's, um, it's looking um, a lot better. Um, and another reason I provided this too was to kind of give a snapshot of if um, CPF transportation and bus replacement were to be in one fund, roughly that's about 
uh, the amount of the balance that that would entail. So um, I think for my operating purposes and for the district, I'll probably still keep my, <coughs> me and my spreadsheets will probably still keep those on my own track for internal purposes, but for official formal purposes, we won't see those um, too much longer in the by, uh, by themselves. It'll be combined into that operational fund. And then also here's a year-over-year -year assessment value increase. Um, just looking at uh, what Fulton County's assessed valuation is doing and what the trends are. Um, in 2015, there was an increase of 4%. In 2016, there was a decrease of 0.73%, so it went down just a notch. Um, and then in 2017, it went down a little farther um, at 3.72% of its decrease. Um, I'm anticipating um, just as much, if not a little more, of a decrease for 2018 as um, assessments come out. And um, until then, we'll just have to see how they, things officially shake out on our 1782 budget. So. And there's also a fund by fund uh, breakdown of um, this year's tax levies, which is our tax revenues, um, in comparison to last year's. And overall, we're down um, almost $55,000 year over year. So 3.72% might not sound like much, but um, in the scheme of things, uh, but it's $55,000 that we're going to put to use. It's, it's quite a good so and then from there it goes into um, the fund, fund it's projected expenditures and projected revenues uh, and what that looks like for each area. So for rainy day, um, we currently have a balance of $119,418. Um, the goal is to grow it, but at the same time at a healthy pace and where we can afford to. Um, for budget purposes, we included the rainy day fund in the budget so that we can receive appropriations to spend money. So appropriations are just a formal way of saying um, the that we have, um, that the board has uh, passed a budget to spend $119,418 if we get in a pinch and we need to, and, um, and then per the DLGF's budget review of commission, um, how much of our allocations that we have, that's our permission to spend. So um, appropriations are, always want to remember just the permission to spend those funds. And you have to have, just because you have, just because you have appropriations doesn't mean you have the cash. So it's another thing to look at as well. Quick question. I'm going to go back just a little bit here. Mm -hmm. The 2017 Fulton County assessed value is $572,822,574, correct? correct? Now, And that is in a decrease in property values like since Dean's closed and amortization there. Is that why it went down? That's not the only one, of course, but why would that assessed value go down? I would guess probably the largest portion is the uh, Dean's facility went from being building in use to being a building not in use uh, that would have dropped some other buildings in similar situations. Uh, the county doesn't apply any kind of a depreciation schedule to uh, these buildings. They do a trending factor and that's what makes the difference on the assessment. So, uh, but I guess my point behind that is the tide is the better more businesses we get in town, the higher our assessed value in general would be, the more money we would have for schools. Yeah, more, more new construction, more, more jobs. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt and back. No, no, this is why we're having this. This is open conversation. I apologize. So uh, moving on to uh, rainy day projected revenues, like I said, I have a zero in there, but at the same time, the board can uh, pass a resolution in 2018 if they so wish to move money into the rainy day. So it's uh, purely for figurative purposes um, and it can change. So moving on along to the uh, general fund, uh, here's another year over year comparison and the thing that popped out in front of me is um, um, that our 2015, I'm sorry, July of 2015 to June of 2016 basic grant money that we received from the state was negative $168,206 in comparison to the prior year. But at the same time, our enrollment grew just over 20 kids. So um, that definitely raised a red flag in my head, obviously. So I went back and I looked, and what it was is that the funding formula that changes every two years changed 
that year. And um, one of the factors that was a big driver for us here in Rochester um, and in Fulton County was um, the complexity in index. And it used to be based off of uh, pre introduced status. And they, um, so when I say like, they, uh, I refer to legislators. <coughs> Down at state, who determine what you know what the funding formula consists of and how it looks. Um, well, that funding formula changed to use different parameters, um, such as um, how many kiddos that are enrolled are um, SNAP, SNAP or um, or on uh, public assistance and things like that. So it changed um, quite a bit, um, and obviously we um, recovered and bounced back for the 16-17 uh, funding year. But at the same time, you know, would I would I um, slow things down a bit when it comes to the budget? And um, I know I've had some conversations um, around the district of, you know, let's hold on and let's see what the funding formula is going to look like because it's things like this 168 thousand drop that after you um, gain 21 students, it's a moving target. Exactly. Exactly. So moving along to the general fund, um, 2018 projected revenues um, are um, broken out. Um, I'm anticipating um, just over $12 million worth of uh, revenue from the basic grant, and we also get some summer school funding as well. <coughs> and then the, the other uh, comes from um, different programs that we have across the district. Um, I have 85944 dollars in the other category and that could consist of things like our before and after school care, um, any, um, um, it's just a flipper of um, if we sell any um, equipment or anything that we bought with general fund money, um, if we scrap things that were purchased with general fund, it's just, um, it's a miscellaneous opportunity to apply that from from there. So that brings us on to our total Revenue projection of twelve million three hundred thirty thousand four hundred sixty four dollars. So from there, um, we've got our projected expenditures, and I've also provided you that in the breakdown, um, it's the last tab, which is the yellow tab. So there's a line by line breakdown. Um, it's um, had a couple modifications done to it, which is why it's uh, provided again. But um, if you want an overview, this is a really good place to get go to get it, and then it'll be on the website um, here this evening. But um, overall, it's uh, fourteen million eight hundred and sixty thousand seven hundred dollars, which is also on your holdout sheet, which is another overview. So um, if you look at general fund just as means, it's right here at the top, unfortunately. And then moving on, let's see. And then um, budgetary updates to recap on. We just did our um, open enrollment with our health insurance, um, the corporation contribution to health insurance. Um, our uh, plans absorbed a 2% increase, which was nominal. It was um, something that we could afford, so we went, went forward with that aspect of things to still make it affordable for our, our teachers and staff. Um, and then um, another thing to keep in mind, we have 10 payrolls for the 1718 contract. 10 of those payrolls are in 2017, <coughs> and we have 16 payrolls in 2018. So as, as I do a 12 month budget, you know, it's uh, lots of different things to keep in mind. But we're still on. So I'm happy to see we go for our employees by absorbing that 2% increase in the insurance. I know that's huge. Great Moved on to debt service fund. We're looking at three million nine hundred and six thousand three hundred seventy-two dollars worth of um, tax levies. On the revenue side of things, this is what we're anticipating. So we have put in our budget, I should say. Um, our expenditures um, are broken down as accordingly here. We've got some um, uh, our bond principal, our bond interest. We have some registrar's fees that are added in here. Um, a lot of our bonds have what's called an O&R fund, which is an operation and reserve fund, so that as, um, as Umbal does our analysis on doing uh, to make sure that everything is um, invested wisely and doing our due diligence of the federal reporting requirements to Emma, that costs money. And, but at the same time, uh, um, it doesn't always last for the full life of the bond, so we've got some extra fees 
budgeted into our debt service to help offset when those ONR funds run out within um, the bond itself. So, and we also have, of course, the unreimbursed textbooks as well. Um, um, it's, it's a higher number. Whether or not we'll leave the whole thing is a question mark. And, um, but at the same time, uh, of those, we can't spend it unless we have the permission. So um, it's best to time that number in that area for that reason. Capital projects fund. Uh, we've got one million eight hundred and fourteen thousand two hundred forty-four dollars um, that we've built our budget for our tax levies. Expenditure side of things, uh, we've got a breakdown of technology solid benefits. Uh, the technology department does a great job of keeping us on track and online, um, so we better have them around. Um, then we also have maintenance of buildings, which is our our um, our HVAC and our um, air conditioning and our utilities that we can pay out of CPF for um, allowable by statute to pay. $300,000 from there. Maintenance of equipment to help keep things online and running. We've got insurance in here as well that we can pay for out of CPF. Building improvements, keeping, um, keeping things running from there. Sports facilities, purchase of mobile fixed equipment. Um, we need the event that computers break and we need to get some more. Um, or even we can be as wide as um, anything that custodial crew might need as well. But Term. And we've got some emergency allocations in there as well, uh, which really helped out last year when we bought the land adjacent to the middle school and we used uh, some of those funds. So just having those extra opportunities in the event that they're needed um, is built in. And any question on CPF for the transportation? Okay, so transportation, we're looking at 921812 dollars worth of tax levies from tax transportation. That's what we're aiming for. Um, our breakdowns for transportation fund include um, you know, from all the way up to the top from Don King and, and his oversight of the transportation department all the way down to all the great bus drivers that we have <coughs> and, uh, making sure our kids are safe on the road. Uh, vehicle operation is um, part of that monitoring services our um, goal subcare categories, vehicle servicing of getting the buses repaired, insurance for the buses and those two categories from there, and then other transportation services um, as well. Last but not least is bus replacement fund. Uh, so we've got $386,023 um, built in for projected revenues from tax levies. Uh, and we're anticipating our three school buses that we have and our bus replacement plan to come about 360000 um, If you think about it, this year we spent just a little over $3,000, 305000 in this rating. So again, we budgeted high in the event that um, metal becomes exorbitantly high, all of a sudden it's uh, costing to pay the bus bill. So just kind of those anomalies that we, we budget just a little bit high to cover ourselves. The next page, I apologize for the entirely small print, but it is printed bigger on the following tab. Um, it's the bus replacement plan. If you look behind the white tab, it's one of the uh, pullouts where it's a more legible version. Uh, but we've got the three buses um, listed on there for our plan for 2018 replacement, and they are was nine, two, three, and two. And I think Don is here to prove me that they're telling me the We've gone through the plan up, down, and then around, so. And it just got the thumbs up, so we're good. I'm gonna you know, hold on to the questions page, but just to go through, the, behind the white tab, like I said, is the bus replacement plan and the notice to taxpayers um, of our public hearing that we'll have in September. Behind the blue tab is the capital project plan and also the notice, and then there's a long legal page, and that's the notice to taxpayers of our public hearing in September as well. And then behind the orange page is uh, the budget form three. It's a template of what the, um, 
what the public notice will look like on Gateway once it's made available for viewing. And then behind the yellow, which is probably a cautionary or a warning, um, is the line by line detail of the budget um, that will be comprised of the budget hearing page. So, any questions over all of that? I had a question about the uh, bus service and maintenance. Mm -hmm. 293,000. That is. Sorry, go ahead. We have 28 buses. We're adding $10,000 a bus. Um, vehicles. I'm sorry, which one are you looking at? On the uh, projected expenditures. Mm -hmm. The vehicle servicing and maintenance? Yeah, 293,000. That also includes fuel. Oh, that's all fuel. Okay. That'd be a big part of it. Mm -hmm. From the study session to now, how much change? Is it Not much, so if very any. Similar? It there was a similar. couple of budget lines that were brought to my attention that were incorrect, and so I fixed those, and that was not all. Um, very, very little. Um, okay. Yeah, it was um, transportation increased just a little bit um, after I got looking closer at expenditures versus revenue. A lot of this comes down to student count. It does. So this is where we say publicly thank you for being here, all our media outlets, and please come to Rochester Community Schools. We'd love to have you. Absolutely, absolutely. It's um, been exciting to see how we've grown over the years. If you notice from the CPF plan that is behind the blue tab, um, it has our um, our student enrollment counts, and it's just really interesting to see how um, they've grown over the years. So. Which actually brings me to um, one of the items within the plan. And if you, if you like, you can. It's, it's listed not only in the plan but also on the public notice. Um, is that we do have um, in planning for that growth and, and, and making sure that we can, um, for lack of a better term, handle it um, to make sure our buildings can handle it and are adequately equipped. Um, we've got even some. Allocations, you know, of um, our, um, our allocation for future projects. I found it. My apologies. So we've got allocations for future projects, but we're also always continuing to look at where is the growth, where do we need it, um, things like that, and not only um, looking at it um, as far as where they need it, but how we're going to be able to afford it along the road, down the road, and things like that. And without so, adversely affecting our taxpayers. Exactly. Being proactive rather than reactive. Valerie? <clears throat> so for your PowerPoint to the CPF plan, the, the student enrollment numbers are different. Um, so like on the, the, power, the PowerPoint one, which mm -hmm. right here, it's like uh, June 13th or June 14th, it averages 1,760. Which slide is the student So uh, I'm holding it up this way. History of uh, general fund state tuition support. Yep, there it is. Got it. Never mind. And then you know the CPF right kind of blue tab. Mm -hmm. And what that is, that's an average ADM. So during those years where there's average ADMs, the state took two ADM, which is our average daily membership collection. They took a spring and they took a February. So uh, there's going to be a little bit of a variance on that. It's, uh, it's 100 students difference. It's in. Yeah, <laughs> then so. that might be a typo. Which I'm not being nosy, am I? Oh, no, no. This is, like I said, this is why we have it. Um, which year are you looking at on the CPF? Um, CPF is 2013 to 2014 is 1861. Mm -hmm. And then 2013 to 2014 is 1760. So it's 101 students difference. I will look into that. Circle back. I'm almost confident it's the 1761. Can you let me know later? I will. Okay. I will. <laughs> so.
So Val, right now we're looking at 1,817 for this year. That is not our final number. Um, our enrollment count date is September 15th. So once we get to that date, then we'll have our final number. Um, it's, it's one of those where um, for budgetary purposes, right now we're receiving funding for each 1,800 students. And, and that's um, the reason being for that, is, which is even lower than what we had in February. Um, but the reason being that we're currently receiving funding for 1,800 students versus the 1,820 or 20 or 30 students is because if our um, September enrollment comes in less than 1,800 kiddos, mm -hmm. then we'll have to give money back in November and December. And so it was the worst, I'd rather budget, and I, you know, Gina and I have had conversations on this, so we'd rather budget for a worst case situation uh, rather than a best case situation. It's a lot more fun to um, get more money in November and December once our final count comes back in more than kiddos. <coughs> Any more questions about? So the next step from there, if there's no more questions, and, and like I said, if you think of anything as you go home and, and look at this more or have more conversations or more thoughts, you know, feel free to give me a call, send me an email. Uh, I'd be more than happy to, to help. I appreciate everything that everybody's, um, all the questions tonight and, um, and the items addressed and pointed out. Uh, but the next step is to uh, apply the feedback again um, and apply it towards the 18, 2018 budget um, and then from there with the board's permission um, that, that up, the budget will get uploaded to Gateway um, for the August 28th uh, <coughs> for the notice to taxpayers and then we'll get those bus replacement plans and CPF plans out to the our newspaper entities here in town and to the advertise as well. So. so will you need a motion to give permission to advertise the 2000 17 2018 budget, correct? Yep. Any other questions or comments, critiques, thoughts for Val? Is there a motion to give permission to advertise the budget? So moved. Move, motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Steve. All in favor of giving permission to advertise the 2017 2018 budget, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Val, thank you for all the hard work you put in this. I, I have a degree in accounting. Now I don't use it. But I have to tell you, looking at these, uh, my eyes go cross and I break out in sweat and everything else. So thank you for all the hard work in making it, making it legible. Moving on to student and stakeholder focus. We have donations from the Rochester Lions Club for high school robotics, $200. G and G Tree Service in the Olive Branch Church of God at Columbia School for removal of a tree and stump, and the Rotary Club for Riddle School shoes for students in need. And before we take a motion, as I always try to do, I want to say thank you again publicly to both the media outlets that are here. Thank you to our uh, people who give those donations as a school district. We certainly appreciate it, and thank you very, very much. Is there any questions about the donations as presented? Is there a motion to approve the donations as presented? Uh, I'll go with Sandy this time. Second. second by Tom. All in favor of approving the donations as presented, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, information analysis second reading of various policies. We have several policies that have been on our website that we are presenting tonight for second reading. First is 1662, which is a, a policy about harassment. 2411, which is about guidance department and their um, ability to recommend mental health services. Also 2700, uh, talking about what we want to put on our performance report. This was something that we were allowed to change a few things to add if we wanted. I should say it that way. Can't take away. We could add it. 5112, uh, deciding to keep uh, the appeal for early admittance to kindergarten because with um, the Senate bill or the Senate Act, we could have taken that away, but we decided to go ahead and keep that. 5130, a uh, policy about exit interviews. So we want to make sure that the guidance counselor 
is our representative at the exit interviews of when students are withdrawing from school. 7510.01, it's about um, our physical fitness areas and about who is allowed to use them. And this pertained mostly to our pool, but um, it could be used in other areas too. But we were defining someone who may use them as any community member. They didn't have to necessarily be a resident. 8400, a policy about safe schools committees. Instead of having uh, committees at each specific school, we are allowed to have a cor just a corporation committee, so we decided to keep, just to have just one corporation committee and then if building specific needs are addressed in that corporation committee. 8420 is a policy about monthly fire drills, and so we are adopting the options on that where we are allowed to substitute out a couple of them for other kinds of drills. 9160 is a policy about uh, reduced rate tickets for school events, which is something that we already do, so we are keeping with that. Um, I would also like to ask if, for the harassment, we had three other policies that we had discussed and we just neglected. I neglected to mention those numbers last time. They are the sister policies in the different silos in our um, policy organization. So as pertaining to students, as pertaining to classified staff, certified staff, et cetera, those are all in different silos. So that would include uh, numbers 3362, 43, 4362, and 5517. What was the first one? 3362, okay. 4362, and 5517, are, those are all sister policies to 1662. Since this is a second reading, is that okay to do that? Any questions for Jenny? In that case, is there a motion to approve the second reading of policy 1662, 2411, 2700, 5112, 5130, 8400, 7510.01, 8420, 9160, 3220, 31, 3362, 4362, and 5517. And I read those because we added those three. So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the previously read second policy, second reading of policy, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. I did have a question. The ones that she just, that Jenny just gave, well, is it their second reading too, even though they weren't mentioned the first time? With well, unanimous consent of the board, they moved to second reading. Okay. Oh, if you go to the guest, they wouldn't, but. I did vote against it. <laughs> Uh, on to the first reading of a new policy and procedure uh, per diem and background checks. And so we don't think we have numbers for this as I was looking at that, I thought, let's make up a number of things. Uh, because when we were looking at policies for meal allowances and per diems, we didn't come up with an actual policy, right? It was just the common practice. Exactly. So in developing a, um, I believe with Tom McKay coming in on, Tomorrow, tomorrow that we can look at that and put that into specific numerical categories, I believe. He's going to help with that. So we are proposing a meal allowance for corporation travel at $70 a day, not to exceed $70 a day, which of course understanding that our um, employees are professionals and that they will use that wisely and understanding also that when we ask them to travel, we don't want to have them to take on the burden of extra expense. Is our proposal for uh, meal allowances per diem. Those will be paid, uh, to be clear, some businesses, when they're paid per diem, it's just a flat, we'll give you the $70 check, you use it however you want. This will retain our, poly or our procedure still where receipts will need to be sent to central office and then, then they will be reimbursed up to $70 per day for food. Any that would be an amendment to uh, bylaw 0144.1, which says that all expenses of the board will be reimbursed uh, for activities authorized by the board. So, there'll be a clarification of that. I'm not sure it's been tagged to that before. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and then the other one has to do with background checks for employees. This is part of a new state law 
that not only do we do background checks on those people who are applying for employment, and that will continue, and that will continue in the same way that it, we have previously done that, but we also now must have background checks done on 20% of our employees every year. Is that, that's not just certificated, that's all, that's all, all. okay. 20% every year, so therefore in five years we will have done all of our employees. And the law allows us to charge our employees for that. So if we should choose to do that, uh, our board unanimously agreed that we do not want to charge our employees for that. That will be a, an expense that will be absorbed by the corporation. Any questions for Jenny on those for the first reading? In that case, is there a motion to approve the first reading of the new policy or procedure for per diem and for background checks? So moved. Motion made by Rick. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the first reading of the new policy procedure, procedure signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Surplus items for trade or scrap. There are a couple of different documents here, and I don't know if you want to break them out separately because the first document would be for the trade-in value of a popcorn machine in our athletic department over at the high school. So what they're requesting to do is to uh, trade that popcorn machine in, and I think it was a $900 credit, and uh, then be able to use that, utilize those funds to help purchase a new popcorn machine uh, over at the high school for the concession. So. I will lean on you, Brad. I don't know if you want to pull this like up popcorn. separately. Or <laughs> I, think no, I, I think we better have one. I think we better have one of the concession stand too. From the athletic end of things, it's time for a new popcorn poppers. <laughs> anyway, you're going to lean on me for what? <laughs> to determine if you want to pull those out separately or. For Actually, I'll defer to the board on that. Is there any objection to doing that all as one fell swoop, or are there any questions to it, or would you rather just do it as one fell swoop and approve the purchase of a new popcorn maker with the credit? Are there any objections to doing it where we buy a new popcorn popper and trade in the old one? No. And get that credit. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what the value of a popcorn popper is. <laughs> Were we trading it in as opposed to selling it? I mean, was that? I think it's just a credit, according yeah. to this, you get from the old I popcorn machine. you're never going to get $900. I wouldn't think so, but like I said, I'm not in the business of estimating the value of popcorn yeah, poppers. Jenny and I get several ways, so. <laughs> I know we'd better have one. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any objection to doing it all in one fell swoop? In that case, uh, there's more for trade and scrap though, right? There is, there and is. And I'm gonna stop for just a second. There's also more stuff we can trade in for scrap or sell for scrap that's excess. Do you, is there any objection to us adding those into this same mo uh, motion? If there is, we'll be able to separate it out. I have no problem. Any objections? I just had a question about the uh, moving the generator. Mm -hmm. What's the story on that? It is an older generator from I, yeah, that has been exposed to the elements, and Skeeter probably has more first-hand knowledge. He went to take pictures and look at it, but it's just believed not to be functioning, and just oh, we off. need the storage area and the ability to. So yeah. it hasn't been used. No, it hasn't been used, and I don't know how long. I just wonder if there's one we're replacing now. So. We have two new generators in the district now and are working on the third with the Riddle project. Would it make sense to try and sell it or advertise it? We could try. I don't know if it will. I mean, we could do it with no guarantees and put it on for a silent. I mean, it still run. runs. There's some value there. So I don't know. Does it run? You can make it run. There's <laughs> a Ford sell. motor, Tom, and so pretty basic. But we can most certainly try to advertise that to sell as is. In order to make this simple and clarify, we'll just do with the popcorn popper first and we'll go with the other ones. Because <laughs> I don't want to cause any confusion that way, if that's all right with everybody. Is there any objection to that? <laughs> is, there a, is there a motion to sell the, or I'm sorry, get a trade in credit of $900 and buy a new popcorn popper for 2250 Is there a motion for that? So moved. Uh, motion by Stacy, second. second by Steve. All in favor of the popcorn popper signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Now we'll go to the scrap. That way there's no question about what we're doing here. <coughs> and that will be, I got the wrong one, of course. It is on the, you have it up for me, Mr. Kissler? You're the man. 
course, mine will come up. Uh, the Hot Point electric dryer at Columbia, an Onan generator, Onan generator that we would like to try maybe to try to sell. Okay. Is there, is there any objection to that, folks? Uh, Delfield Pasta refrigerator, and then added today at three o'clock a Maytay range from the high school consumer science room. So I guess we're going to scratch the Onan generator off there. And put that as sell as is. You want to try selling as is, Tom? Is there any objection from the board as doing that? No. Okay. Sure. Sure there's an objection or sure sell it as is? Sell it as is. Okay. Would there be time for a public to look at it? Oh, absolutely. We can do that. We'll figure that out. And it's sit there for a while. It'll, it has it'll be there a little while. We'll mm. get them there. We'll get them to look at it. Absolutely. Okay. So. Items for scrap, the electric dryer for Columbia, the Delphil Pass refrigerator in the Maytag High School, the Onan generator will be put up for people to look at and bid on, correct? All of it. The Onan generator will be put up for bid, right? And the other number one, three, and one added will be put up for scrap. scrap. Okay. Is there any objection to any of that? Is there a motion to approve those items for scrap as given? Second. Moved by Sandy? Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving items for scrap as given, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, tennis wall. I believe that Mr. Mars and Mr. Atkinson are patiently waiting. Thank you for waiting on us. Uh, in regards to tennis hitting wall, that Mr. Mars uh, wrote a letter um, some time ago requesting. So if you want to share plans and ideas and thoughts. As long as the people on TV can hear you, I don't care. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm Mike Mars. I had written a school board um, to the superintendent. Uh, actually, I actually sent it to Superintendent uh, Ms. Vance and also to tennis coach uh, Jesse Atkinson and the athletic director back in early July. Previously, I don't know, it was about five years ago when Dr. Rock was the superintendent. I had talked to some other former players like Joan Carter and Eric Johnson and some different people actually been talking to Joe about it. Uh, he's the one that helped shoot it down. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but we talked about naming the tennis courts after Charlie Rathburn, who was about a 10-year coach here at uh, for the Rochester High School boys and young girls after I left or during that time period. But anyway, um, I sent the letter and Joe called me and I think he was in Brad's position at the time and he said basically great idea, but it doesn't fit. Um, and I asked him, you know, what about uh, baseball field, you know, Copeland fields or whatever. And he said basically that didn't fit either, but it was done. We're not going to repeat the same mistake in the future. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I understood because there was no significant financial contribution. And he only been here 10 years and, you know, you can start naming something after every person ever came through here. And I understand that. So we started thinking about what we could do. And he said maybe we could do something like bleachers or something to a lesser degree where we could make it in the memorial of Mr. Radford, um, but we couldn't name the courts after him. So we got to thinking, and, and over the last, I don't know, year, I started thinking that a hitting wall would be really nice because when I was a kid back in like, the 70s, when we moved to Rochester, there was a hitting wall at the city park, and it's just a great way to learn how to play tennis because um, I'm a former student and was tennis player and was pretty, pretty decent for around here. But I can tell you, when you're first learning how to play tennis, the biggest problem with playing game is you go out there with a friend and a can of balls, and in an hour you're going to hit for about five minutes because you don't have the hand-like coordination and the repetition and everything to become proficient at tennis. So probably the best thing you can do is if you have a hitting ball for kids that are just starting for the youth, for even the high school kids, and then just people in the community that use the courts. Um, it's a great way to build a repetition and really build your strokes and it's a way for a coach to take players and say, you know, you need to work on this and then have them go work on that off the hitting wall. So I think it would be a great asset to the school corporation, to the tennis program, and to Rochester in general. Um, I know when Mr. Rathburn was here, you know, we had the point where we won four straight sectionals. Tennis has never really been a big um, sport at the school, um, but I think with what Jesse's doing, trying to get the Younger kids interested, get them playing, you know, get, the, get the middle school because he was in the middle school. He got kids interested. You know, you don't, if you get all your good athletes going into football and 
whatever, but if you can get some kids headed into tennis um, at an early age, you can't really pick up a racket. I mean, I did, but it's not the best thing to pick up a racket when you're entering your freshman year and go learn how to play tennis because you're probably not going to get that good. If you can start playing years earlier, it can be done there. And I think it's all in position. I've got a um, picture. This isn't the wall. It's a wall. And I'll just pass it to Jenny and then you guys can get an idea of what a tennis wall is. But essentially, it would be a, a 10. Um, Chad Leap wasn't available tonight, but essentially it would be a 10 by 20 foot. Any wall would be 10 foot high. It would be 20 foot wide. It would be green, like tennis green, and like hunter green for the white stripe for where the net would be. Um, it would be Chad Leap through Skyline Construction, who's a former player, has agreed to donate the labor, which that was going to be the primary cost. I think we'd be looking at several thousand dollars to get someone to build it. He was going to take a crew and have them come to the school the high school courts and on the, if you think of the tennis courts as like six courts, three to the north and three on the south, it would be in that southwest corner, um, that southwest court against the west fence. It actually wouldn't be attached to the fence. There would be separate posts that would go in the ground outside of the fence um, to the west of the fence. That would be the support. That way if we have wind or whatever, it's not going to tear the fence down. Um, and Chad builds million dollar houses on like Max County and all around. So I'm very confident that he's going to build it well and, and do that. We've also, through uh, myself and other former players and even a uh, former coach, um, have set up, well, I think Jesse already had it, but the Rochester Tennis Club, um, and hopefully with the help of Christina in the paper, if it's approved, um, which we'd like to then have donations made to pay for the materials. So we're looking at about 1200 bucks plus uh, paint and then, um, but pretty much, we've already got like $800 lined up if we were to go, and then whatever we don't have, if we're sure I can come up with the rest. And basically that would be it, and Chad could probably get on it as soon as the next couple weeks, if it was something that could be done. I think it could be put up pretty quickly if he takes a crew and gets out there. Um, and then, um, that's really it. I don't see any real liability um, issues that would impact the school significantly. I mean, Ted could address that if he has concerns, but I, or uh, Rachel, but um, essentially it'll be a, a wall built and supported by a contractor. Um, I don't think it's any more risky than the fence that's blowing over to begin with, so I, mean, I think it would up your general liability <coughs> whatever shouldn't be a problem. And I think it would be a huge asset um, to the school, especially the tennis program, and it wouldn't cost the school anything. And then we'd like to be able to put a plaque or a placard or something attached to the fence near that. I would like to put it in the wall, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. Um, but just something maybe through TikTok Trophy Shop or some place um, that would put it in honor of, of Charlie Rathburn and we wanted to call it like Chaz's Wall or something informally, but um, that's pretty much it. And I, I think it wouldn't look, it won't look cheap and um, it'd be, I think it would be a real benefit to the kids and everyone and I kind of like data on it myself so um, that's pretty much it and we were just hoping that um, the school board would consider that and maybe approve it and we can get going soon. Mr. Atkinson? Uh, I just I want to also you know say that you know, I'm here to absolutely support this project I think it's I think it's great for the kids uh, you know to just kind of build those skills like you said you know the repetition in a sport like tennis Repetition is pretty much the most important thing in terms of building, you know, a base level of you know, what you can do in the sport. And I think that's 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 a great place. And to start. the follow chain of command, Mr. Marks isn't here. I assume he's been talked to about this. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know him personally, so I reached out to Ms. Vance, and then I you know Jesse. I probably should have maybe talked. No, no, no. That, I'm sure they did. I just wanted to make sure. I don't want to let that. <coughs> there is a chain of command. So. Yes, sure. Um, so the idea of putting a placard in some way honoring Mr. Rathburn sounds fabulous. Is there any sort of talk about advertising, like for Chad or Skyline or anybody else who's making donations? Is there any plan to have those um, acknowledged at some level? Well, I mean that's you know I mean we'll we'll go as far as I guess the school will allow. I don't want to overstep our bounds. I'm hoping. 
maybe through the newspaper or some other media outlet to get Skyline Builders some, you know, some uh, publicity because it is a really nice thing. Honestly, if it wasn't for Chad, um, the thing wouldn't come together probably because I don't have five grand. I mean, maybe I could throw a lot of the money, but I probably wouldn't do that. So if it wasn't for him saying, as he said back when we were living this five years ago, that he would do whatever, he'd donate time, labor, and, and so, yeah, I, mean, I would like to see those people get whatever, and we could list uh, Skyline or Chad or whatever on that as well, if, if that's appropriate. But I don't think anybody really is looking for any recognition. Um, we're just wanting to do it for Mr. Rathburn, but also, I think, for the school, uh, for the kids, because I think it will really help Jesse's program at the school with the tennis. I think that's the primary reason that it would be something that people, you know, 20 years from now say, oh, man, we all know him from when I played in the 80s, early 80s, and then there was you know, Scott Zen and Joel Carter and uh, Eric Johnson and Jesse, and there's just been Chad Lee. I mean, there's a bunch of, there's probably 100 people that live in Rochester that are somehow affiliated with, or affiliated with Mr. Rafferty, so that's kind of the um, thing behind that. Well, I think it's wonderful that you want to honor him and you're doing it in such a way to help the current students. Um, my concern would just be that any perhaps design, final design be approved by Mrs. Vance. I don't necessarily think we have to go over it. I don't think they would do this, but I would, I personally wouldn't like to come in and see that it's all Hit the done. Eye and sky done. like, ooh, it's all skylight. Which I think it's yeah. great that they're donating that. And I don't mind if they're acknowledged in some way. We just right. I don't mean, want to get we, burned on, on advertising. Right, exactly. And I mean, Truthfully, what my intention was just to do a, a plaque that would maybe be like one by one or even maybe smaller. I don't know, I hadn't looked at that, but probably just attach it to the fence next to the hitting wall in a way that's not, um, looks looks appropriate at about the right level. And then probably just say something about Mr. Rathburn. I mean, maybe, you know, Charlie Rathburn, tennis coach, list the years, and something to that effect. And probably leave everybody else out of it. I think maybe. Um, if the paper puts anything out where they can mention chat, but I don't think anybody's looking for that. And we're not. Well, we're just for myself, I'm sure Mr. Martz, if it came to that, he and Mrs. Vance could figure it out. That's his house, so. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing is, is, being on the southwest wall, it won't, when people watch tennis, um, you know, they're sitting either back in the south in the bleachers or whatever, and you can walk around. But for the most part, I was talking to Jesse, nobody really stands over there and watches tennis. So. And typically, you know, even in a high school match, and you'll get a you'll get a match going on down there, but it's typically going to be a JP match because you just got three singles and two bars and doubles, so those are going to be your first five courts. So I don't think it's going to obstruct the view for anything for people coming and whatever, and it's something that the entire community can use and it's well built. And I just think it would last, and then you know whatever. So that's kind of where we're at. Number one, we don't want it to look like. Boards around the fence around the baseball court, the baseball field down there. Little league. Okay. Right. Right. Oh, you mean all the signs? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think the sign you wouldn't even notice it unless right. you walked up. Right. So to clarify, so we put this issue to rest. You don't guys don't care to advertise on it as long as it's the people that give the exactly. appropriate credit for it. It's going to be tennis green. If there's any advertisement like that, we go through Mr. Marks and the athletic department through Mrs. Vance and then us, correct? Exactly. Okay. I just, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Well, yeah, Did I say that correctly? What, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. But does this have to have a, does the plan have to be surveyed? Does it need a permit? Uh, it doesn't have to be surveyed. It may, may need a permit. I doubt it. But that depends on whether they have to build a pad for the... What I had, good point, Ted. I, uh, I did ask Chad, I texted him last week and said, hey, uh, my boss built like a shed or something and he got in trouble, so uh, for not having a permit a couple years ago. So it dawned on me that you, know, you might want to have a permit. So I asked Chad, will you need a permit for that? And he said, I don't think so, but I will check with Cassie or whoever is the people in charge of that. So that's being looked into, okay. make sure we're not doing anything that's going to cause a problem. And I don't think it would, but I don't, I'm not a contractor. And I would respect the request we talked to Mr. Carter and Mr. Swank about that, so, if you don't mind. So then afterwards, would you want us to maintain that, or is that something that your group will continue to maintain? Well, I mean, you know, we're, we're not really a group. I mean, that's the thing, you know, I mean, we're gonna, the money's going to go into the Rochester Tennis Club, which I think is a non-for-profit um, account that's set up, so people can put the money in there and then we can use that to pay Chad, because he's just going to cover everything up front, and we're going to pay him back for the materials. But I, I don't know. I mean, that's something that, you know, if you want to 
guess to go out there and do that, we can, I guess, start trying to build a reserve to maintain it. I would anticipate, other than paint, uh, this thing standing for quite some time. He's using, he said, the top of the line, because I was thinking about 800 bucks, and he said it's going to be 1,200 plus paint. So he said, but to get top of the line uh, plywood and the, the structure materials that you want to handle the weather and not be chipping and, you know, whatever, be an eyesore soon. I don't really think that's going to be a problem, but we really haven't honestly addressed that because I guess it's a good point, but we don't really have the answer for you there. Mike, you mentioned liability, and my concern is looking at the, uh, uh, the Google map of the tennis court, it looks like there are maybe 40, 45 feet between the sidewalk and the wall you're talking about. Hard to measure these, but it looks like it's no deeper than half of the tennis court. And I'm wondering if, in fact, there's going to need to be some fencing or something to protect players from stepping back either onto the sidewalk or more critically out on the park road. I mean, Jesse, you may have a better feel for that, whether that's deep enough that you don't have to worry about that or what. My understanding was that the the wall would be on the inside mm -hmm. of the court. So with the with the actual tennis court surface as well. Right. So uh -huh. that, that wouldn't necessarily be no, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I mean, yeah, I didn't make that clear, but actually to save because we had talked at one point of maybe trying to like do this, like going towards the middle school, mm -hmm. but you have parking there, and then the problem is also you've got probably uneven pavement and you got all those issues. Assuming the tennis courts stay reasonably well paved, the wall would actually be the the support structure would be on the outside, but the tennis hitting ball would actually be inside the fence, and you would hit from this direction to that direction. It's like if that was the wall, you'd be hitting from here, so you'd be using the existing tennis court. Yep. So and you're, you're, you're inside service. the tennis court. Yeah, you're inside this sort of no. tennis court the entire time. Uh, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Marks? <coughs> In that case, is there a motion to approve the tennis wall as presented? Mm -hmm. Moved move by Jenny, second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the tennis wall, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Marsh. Thanks, Jess. Mr. Atkinson. Appreciate uh, Personnel, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys have waited patiently, and Mrs. Vance is very good about this. If you want to leave, feel free. We always encourage everybody to stay for the school board meeting if you want to. So here's your chance to get out if you want. It's so much fun. I appreciate you letting us come, and it was interesting. I've never been to one. Thank you. Uh, personnel report. This letters in the second one down at the moment. Mm -hmm. Personnel report for August 21st, 2017. It's this one. That's letters from, it's the one at the bottom column on the left. Mr. Kissel. Take uh, I think you have to scroll down, I can tell you. Keep going, please. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's not the one. One directly below that. There you go. Uh, hiring Teresa Mullenkamp for high school nurse for special needs student life skills classroom instructional assistant. Ashley Furnival, Columbia School instructional assistant. Patty Halford, middle school building technician. Gabriella Hoffman, middle school instructional assistant in the resource room. Nikki Obermeyer, substitute for Brittany Piercy's maternity leave, Riddle third grade teacher from November 22nd, 2017 to the end of 2017-2018 school year. Resignations, Jeremy Swango, Columbia School Instructional Assistant. He will, he has worked, had worked through August 11th of this year. Jessica France, middle school sixth grade math teacher. Dan Funk, network administrator, effective August 9th of this year. And Bill Hamill, bus driver. CIA coaches. Middle school is going to split their pay evenly. Yes. Mr. Chad Thomas, Ms. Tammy Paul, Ms. Lauren Atkinson, Mr. Kyle Bernanis, Ms. Angie Smith. Oh, okay. Mr. Thomas, Ms. Paul, Ms. Atkinson, Mr. Bernanis from the middle school. And then Angie Smith at Riddle School for a two-year term, Jenny Moore at Riddle Middle School for a two-year term, and Mona Zion at Riddle School for a two-year term. Academic team sponsors, Chris Cox, Middle School Math. Tammy Paul, Middle School Language Arts, Dan Bailey, Middle School Social Studies, Misty Kreit, Middle School Science, and Lori, Lauren Atkinson, Middle School Spell Bowl. 
High School Extracurricular Amy Blackburn, National Honor Society Advisor for the 2017-2018 school year. Sarah Reese is the Assistant Tri Epsilon Drama Club Director for the 2017-2018 school year. Sports hirings, Clarissa Elliott, Middle School 6th Grade Volleyball Coach, Kyle Sechrist, High School Assistant Football Coach, and Selena Lehman, Middle School Assistant Cross Country Coach. Sports resignations, Christina Bertram, Diving Coach, and then came in today reassigning Pam Brower from Riddle 4th to RMS 6th Math Teacher when Mr. Bernanke has a qualified replacement. I'd love to know what you paid him, Mr. Hawes. <laughs> <laughs> Emily Williams from grade level IA to RMS Library Assistant and a resignation. Janelle Sager is the RMS Library Assistant effective August 18th, 2017. Is there anyone anybody would like singled out? In that case, is there a motion to approve the personnel report as given? So moved. I'm going to go with Rick on this one okay. as a move, move motion, and Sandy, I'll take yours as a second. Is that correct? Yeah, that's fine. All in favor is approving, of approving the personnel report as given. Please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Um, sorry. Uh, technology updates and job descriptions. I'll turn it over to Scott Kessler here in just one second, but do want to thank him. I know that. Um, it's been a busy start to the year. I'm losing my voice. I apologize. It's been a busy start to the year, and I do appreciate your hard work and effort, Scott. And as we went through this um, with the, with the <laughs> different resignations and openings, it's just the time to, to relook at that department as a whole and make sure that we pull it together in a way that will support our needs now. And one thing that we have talked about in the recent past is that Scott and I today were just talking that we don't believe that we've had a change in the dynamic of the tech department since. Tom Kelly was here and we are now one to one across the district and so it's just time as we go through this to make sure that we get it right and are progressive moving forward. So that being said, a sincere thank you, Scott, and then I'll turn it over to you to kind of lead through some of the thought processes, um, knowing that what we would like to do is pull that core team together and keep this up a date for next Thursday to rehash all of this within the interviews and those types of things. Well, um, we were looking at a couple of different uh, we threw out a bunch of different options um, with, with uh, redoing the technology department. Um, one is like uh, that we had, uh, like we have at the middle school, um, with Valerie Good and uh, Riddle with Sue Ellen Denny, where they're kind of a person that is in the building themselves, and they take care of like some of the, the uh, immediate needs, like um, password reset to reset some computers or iPads or whatever the device may be. Um, so they're there on hand. Um, where Dan was like at the at the high school and he did that, but there was a lot of other other things that he did, which was like take care of like security issues and cameras and um, a bunch of other stuff which he would get um, bogged down with, with that. So we were looking at um, a position called the Building Technology Coordinator, and um, that, would, that would be housed at the high school um, in, in, in the office that Dan was in, and basically take care of uh, all of the day-to-day uh, the -day things, helping teachers with printer problems or um, uh, resetting passwords, some of those quick things that those uh, um, students may, may need. Just kind of like uh, what uh, Valerie and Simone do at, at the other two schools. And, and this is a job description that was approved prior to my being superintendent when when they were on. So what we would be looking for here, and I apologize for interrupting, is not, I don't believe we need to approve on the job description because it's one that had already existed, but being able to bring that person into the high school in that capacity under the same description that those two other ladies have. And the other position then would, we would still need a network administrator that uh, we had revamped some of the um, some of the wording that was in the original job description uh, back about 10 years ago. So uh, some of the new things that are in there, um, uh, some of the current programs that we currently use um, that, that we have added into the, to the uh, new job description. Um, and then that way that person would be housed at, over here at the Army Center in, in the 
office area over here and would be more of a cor corporation person uh, like myself that would be going around to all of the buildings instead of just being housed at the high school. So that way, uh, with multiple things going on and helping out with like the, um, uh, the as in the job description would be like the, uh, the uh, servers and the, and the software or the uh, cameras and and I, uh, services, servers, workstations, wireless controllers, access points, um, and uh, all the stuff that the network administrator uh, demanded as well. And this this description was approved, I believe, just two years ago when Scott came on as the <coughs> technology director. So what <coughs> in red are the updates to the description that was approved, I believe, uh, just a year and a half or two years ago. So you'll see that in red. We were really looking at is Val and I with more Val, but working on the budget and how can we continue to reduce the cost to the district? We do believe that if we could get somebody who's MAC certified, we could take some of um, those repairs right in house instead of having to send those off, wait on the return time, be able to to house some of that here within our district will help defray a lot of the cost on some of those simpler things that we could and should be getting done here. So we're hoping that with your approval and that new wording that will help offset the cost that we may incur. Any questions for Mr. Kissler? How does this relate to the other technology position that we have had open? We are still, that's part of what we want to tackle as a team, but the, at our last meeting, the gentleman correct me, but they are still leaning towards the data person, testing coordinator. So really this is, in, this is making what was one job to do. So then we'll have three jobs that are open. The, the job that would be at it would be the uh, building tech coordinator, like an IA pay, like the school and any the other. The building tech, or the data person, testing person would fulfill or be a replacement in Dan McCarthy's position. This network administrator would be somebody that would be moving into Dan Funk position. So the position that we're technically adding would be that position for the building level coordinator. That's what I was asking. Awesome. We are adding a position. One. This isn't just reimagining those other two positions right. into no, two no, different no. separate positions. This would be adding, would be adding a position. Correct. So looking at the IT department, we're still looking at a data specialist testing coordinator. The position that we wanted to add. Then the network administrator, we, or the, I'm sorry, the building technology coordinator, we would be putting someone in just to work in the school. Right. And then to have one over here. Well, the, their office would be here, but yeah. they would service the district service as a whole. So we're going to be looking for still two more people. Okay. Or three. Three more people. Three. Three. And the budget can. That was my next question. <laughs> can I have to clarify that for you, Dan? Yeah. What it is is. What Valor Good does in my building and what Sue Allen does for Luke, the kid whose iPad is malfunctioning, the kid thinks, or the parent who's upset because the iPad didn't work at home, Valerie takes care of all that. Where when you had Dan Funk at the high school, he was dealing with those little things. And when we were calling as an administrative team, hey, we need this, this, and this done in our building, he was being pulled two ways where that will alleviate that and allow Scott to do what Scott needs to do and allow us to get some of those bigger tasks completed. So that's why I think it's really important for that addition to the high school. That will give us two district-wide people now that we have so many devices. Because there for a while, when we just had iPads that stayed in our building and weren't sending them home, it was a little easier to manage. And now we're on our third year of that. It would be nice to have not two Scots, but Scott and somebody else who's a district going to every building and not getting pulled by the high school for every little MacBook concern. So who will help with Columbia then? When? Mm. Well, Scott and uh, the new uh, network administrator would be, would be our primary contacts, but then we're working on trying to incorporate uh, the technology piece into our CIA coach positions. So my goal is to work with Scott and the new district administrator to kind of put in a training program where they can kind of handle some of those grade level um, things that come up with, so without having to have a, 
a specific person. And I want to be a part of that training as well so that, that I can help troubleshoot some of that stuff too. I mean, we're not sending our iPads home um, except for, uh, you know, on, on uh, uh, e-learning days. So our needs are just, are more day-to-day not a lot of home issue type deals like that that we have to deal with. So and then we also have Wendy Scobie to the right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. As well we've got. To help so off we, we feel like difference. we feel like we'll be we'll be fine at Columbia with the with, with that um, system set up that way. Any other questions? Is there a motion to approve the technology updates and job descriptions as presented? So moved. moved by Sandy. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of the technology updates and job descriptions approval, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Bus route incentive pay, Mr. King. I think, I'm sorry, yes. Mrs. No, Vance. No, on no, the no absolutely. We've got uh, a couple bus routes that go out of school district. And I don't know if you know, but maybe you do know how hard it is to get bus drivers, period. And how hard it is to get people to say, okay, hey, I'd be willing to take one of those routes that goes to Argus or that route that goes to Fulton. Those people have to get up earlier. They have to drive more miles. They put in more time. I think they should be compensated for that extra time and extra miles that they're putting in. Uh, yeah, they get paid so much a mile to go, but I think they need a little bit more on top of that. So that, and that is, this pay would attach to those routes as long as we continue to have those routes, no matter who's driving them. So it's not going, it's going to that person that's driving it now, but if that would change next year in the structure of our corporation that maybe we don't have those routes or maybe we send a different person then that pay, this $15 a day pay extra would go to that person. Uh, so it's something that's gonna stay with those. Uh, Right now, our routes to Argus are costing us 20 miles extra a day. Our route to Fulton and back is costing us 50, 12 miles extra beyond our corporation boundaries. So, in my opinion as transportation director and what I've seen and what I've observed from these people, they're dedicated to what they do. They don't mind doing it, but I think we need to say, hey, this is a thank you. Yeah, it's something they're going to get every day extra. It's going to add $5,400 to our transportation budget for each year but that's okay as concerning and some of you I'm sure are going to think well what are you going to do for everybody else well that's in the works that's coming up maybe the next time I'm working on that right now as a general incentive pay for everybody because hey I tell you people we've got great people and if we don't keep them we're going to lose them and if we're trying to attract Joe Schmo out here off of the street or somebody to be a bus driver and they're looking at what we're paying people and they're going to go why do I want to do that why do I want to put up with 60 kids on this bus that have a price tag of one million dollars across their forehead if something happens to that bus in an accident or something and I'm liable for that along with the school corporation but I don't want to drive that for seventy five dollars a day my time and, and money and my efforts are worth more than that and so you know I'm in process of looking at what other school corporations pay. I want our corporation drivers to be the best paid people they are around because they are the best people that we have around as drivers. They work hard, they take care of their buses, they care about their kids, and you know, in building that relationship with those kids, they need to be rewarded for what they're doing. And right now, tonight, I would like for your approval on $15 a day extra for the Argus route and the Fulton route to be effective starting today with today's routes, if you so desire. And then, um, just, uh, Don had shared an amount. When we get FICA and everything figured in, you're looking at closer to 6,000 over the course of the year, $5,974. And this comes out of transportation, yeah, and which is very healthy, if I remember yes. correctly. Mm -hmm. Do and you have any problem with, I'm sorry, Sandy, go ahead. I was just gonna say that incentive pay goes with the route. Correct. So next year, if it's a different driver goes with that route, it would go to that driver. Yes, sir? So what do we pay per mile? Right now, we're paying 18 cents a mile. I know this seems like a healthy increase per day for, for a driver, but 
you know, I've got one of those people that they're getting up and they're on the road at 10 after 6 every morning. They're driving two hours. Their route every day is two hours by the time they go to Argus and back every time. And I think they deserve a little bit of an extra incentive. Do other school corporations do that for other <coughs> routes? Not that I'm aware of, but uh, I know Caston has one that comes to Rochester, and that is not paid anything extra to that person. That's up to them. I'm looking. I'm looking to take care of our drivers and reward our drivers for what they do. And I'm going to piggyback on you here. The public didn't know we do send buses to Argus and Fulton mm -hmm. because we want to get student as many students here as we can. Well, and because they have enrolled here, and there comes a point where it is beneficial, um, financially beneficial, to go ahead and cross that line and bring them in. And when the enrollment numbers boost in that area, how many kids do we get from the Fulton area? How many kids do we get from the Argus area? Well, I don't know how many are utilizing Don can answer the transportation. I would have to break down the transfer okay. students. Just, I'm just curious. Yeah. This is a very employee. Um, beneficial market right now. Mm -hmm. I think you could go every single business in town and find that they are hiring. So mm -hmm. we have good drivers and this will help keep good drivers. I think it's great that they have um, someone who will advocate for them. That's what and you say we can afford it? We can. This is uh, very much like more cost effective than if one of our drivers was to leave and then all those yeah. Yeah. I make a motion. <coughs> Thank you. Beat me to it. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, we will entertain all questions from you. No, no, that's okay. I'm just saying I wanted to entertain any questions. Well, it just seems like um, <clears throat> the board puts a lot of work when we determine pay for employees. Uh, a lot of times, like when we do pipeline pay for IAs, that was over a series of almost, <clears throat> excuse me, almost three months in a row of, of study sessions. We don't just um, look at it for five minutes at a board meeting and then take a vote because then every other department head is going to come and ask for money and they'll give us a five minute presentation they'll want raises for everybody so we sometimes almost all the time that i've seen is we're a little more calculating about it when we do sub sub pay mrs vance seems like she's been working for the last year and a half on, on substitute pay and we dedicated a lot of time to ia pay so i um, <coughs> I'm not even sure how it became an agenda item tonight because normally this this seems to me to feel better that we would talk about it as a board in a study session. Not that they don't deserve pay because they're doing extra work. Because when you start to pay a few people extra, everybody else in the house wants extra. I understand so, that. So uh, that's a hard. It's an easy decision for you, but it's a hard decision for us. I understand that also. So. I think he said that he just wanted this right now. <laughs> the, no, for these drivers, but that he did want to, to put all this extra time into seeing how our pay compared with other schools and would bring that to us at a separate time. And I would encourage that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be a good yeah I, I'm, to, I'm to looking at trying to get information from four or five, six corporations on what they pay their drivers and everything. Uh, we, we just went through and refigured our driver's routes today. Uh, with the with the new routes and everything this year for the the miles they're driving some of them went up some of them went down You know because we reconstructed our routes trying to be a little more Balanced on the miles and everything that people were driving and the number of kids they were picking up and hauling Well I, the way I see this guy folks board is there's one two ways we can go and I will entertain any motions presented by any bill member of course one most would be to go ahead and ask for a motion for to approve the route and send a pay or we could table this look at it the next study session and then make it pre pre back to this date if we wanted to i think couldn't we those are the choices i see so i'll entertain any motion i will make a motion that we go ahead with the incentive pay that only involves two drivers and then when he wants to come back to us with more information about that Please remember, <clears throat> these bus drivers are handling our children. Right. Clear. And that's very emotional for people. We want the very, very best. I agree. So that's. But that's I that's speak nice. for all board members, so yes. I want to make sure that that's everyone's view is presented. We go ahead and approve this for the two 
routes. That's your motion. Go ahead and approve it as given for the two routes. Okay. The motion was made by Mandy. Sandy <laughs> to approve the route and Senate pay as presented by Mr. King as given. Is there a second? Second by Stacy to approve it. All in favor of approving the route and Senate pay as given by Mr. King, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Um, Superintendent business. Just very quickly, um, Mr. Snyder and I had the opportunity to sit down with Mrs. Atkinson who ran our summer reading program and it appears as if the data, the numbers were very, very good. So just a quick uh, reflection on that. We had 23 kids that had perfect attendance uh, throughout that course. We um, actually provided service for 63 students um, with 88% of the, with an attendance rate of 88% or better for those 63 students. And Mr. Snyder shared at one of our last meetings that uh, what is becoming his problem is that he is seeing that data grow in those foundational reading skill area and, and believe that this was very, very beneficial to those students. I know that Mrs. Atkinson had shared that the parents were really encouraged by that, very, very thankful for that process. So just wanted to um, give you an update on that summer reading program. This is in addition to um, the the course that we teach for IRE 3, it goes above and beyond that. So a great turnout and Mr. Snyder saying he's seen, starting to see those results pay off in his building. I don't know if you want to comment any further uh, on that. The, the, uh, I, I just think the, the data speaks for itself with the number 88% uh, attendance rate on, during the summertime, 20, 20 plus kids with perfect attendance. Uh, Mrs. Atkinson did a great job. Uh, those teachers and those IAs that worked did a great job of working with those kids. Another thing is is that there was growth. Every student made growth. The parents are very excited at the end of the program to know where their kid went during the summer and uh, and it's a, a good opportunity. Some of those kids don't get out uh, and, and do much for the summer anyways and so that's you know that's their chance to get out and be amongst their peers and, and things like that. So um, I just want to say thanks to, to Mrs. Atkinson and her crew that did a fabulous job and um, I, I think that that we can continue to build this summer reading program, possibly, you know, join up with the, the library and even, you know, build in build it into a, a bigger uh, uh, project. But um, I, I think we're seeing seeing great gains from it. So, and then on Mrs. Atkinson's side, also an opportunity to learn those uh, administrative skills that we're trying to build within the district as well. And she did a great job with that. And then just in the reminder for fun and fellowship, this uh, Friday evening we're going to tailgate at 6 o'clock before the football game, and Mr. Snyder has shared he's going to give me a grilling lesson. As long as I don't have to wear an Alabama apron, I'm on board for that. Ooh, Kentucky, Alabama. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here we go, right out there in the parking lot. And then a sincere thank you to Valerie, and not only for her work on the budget, but for Valerie and Kathy, who are getting ready to launch within our own district the food pantry and the backpack program and the administrative team that's going to help take that on and expand that for Rochester schools. And um, as with anything, uh, those new things have multiple steps and when you get ready to launch it, but it'll be a great endeavor for our students here in the district. I believe. We offer a chance for the public to comment. Is there any public comment? I just want to thank the, the corporation for and, and Valerie for uh, helping us get the uh, the glasses for the uh, eclipse viewing for the entire corporation today. I know that that wasn't a, a cheap uh, deal, and luckily the uh, cloud cover passed uh, through enough to where we were able to get out there and view it. And I think it was a great learning experience for those students and, and the staff and, and everybody that was involved. So I appreciate the investment in that for our for our kids to have that opportunity. Did they get to take them home too for 2024? Good. I, I didn't wasn't that excited about it, and then I saw it, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm glad our kids got to do it, too. Any other public comment? Is there any further? I just, I'm so happy to see three principals here. Mm -hmm. Adam, Adam has a supervi supervision tonight. I forget what athletic events he and Greg yeah. and somebody else were splitting like up for. Yeah. 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 I know Carrie, Corey's playing volleyball. Uh, I would just like to say that um, I had a, a parent contact me that said that how wonderful Mr. Raki was with the emergency, the situation that happened 
with their student on Friday and uh, your staff and your nurse went above and beyond and uh, she had to go to Riley but she's good to go and she's back today and um, they were thrilled that was a, a new uh, never been to that school really they didn't know anybody and it was a wonderful positive experience so I just wanted to let me tell your staff thank you thank you yes that was definitely the front office and uh the nurse, the nurse informed me that I was looking a little pale and sweaty, so I don't know much credit I had to take that. But. Due to hip laws, we can't discuss them. I heard from my nine-year-old what it looked like, and I understand. <laughs> they did, did a nice job. <coughs> Piggyback off of what Jason said with the Eclipse, thank you again for the glasses. The public library came out to a old help, and I know uh, RC4TV came you know, with uh, cameras and live TV, so appreciate all of that as well. Our, our staff, I mean, did, did a fabulous job with those kids. They went out in small groups of three, three to five at the most, and uh, safety was their number one priority. And uh, our, our teachers and IAs and everybody in that building just did a great job for those kids, and, and they were excited. Those kids came in and they were, they were pumped up. So it was, it was really, it was really awesome. And, yeah. Is there any? Bit, I'm sorry, Mr. Nair. No, no, it, 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 it was a great day. And that, that's credit to our staff. So, is there a business to discuss? In that case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned. Oh. Yeah, all